Welcome to the show. I'm Jason Whitlock, and I'll tell you why I don't like LeBron's latest comment. And I'm Colin Coward, and I'll tell you why the Rockets shouldn't be so happy about their 17-game winning streak. Yeah, I said it. They should be mad. Speak for yourself <laughs> starts now. There's a point to that comment. They should be upset about winning 17 I'll in I'll get row. to it. Oh, my God. I can't wait to hear this. All right, hello and welcome. We're joined today by Fox NBA analyst Chris Broussard and Cavaliers reporter for Fox Sports Ohio, Ali Clifton. Let's start in Denver where the revamped Cavaliers got another win last night with a huge game from LeBron who went off for 39 points, 10 assists, and eight boards and scored Cleveland's final nine points to cement the game. After the game, nobody was more impressed with the performance than LeBron James. LeBron, it's your 15th season. You haven't missed a game this year. You've been averaging a triple-double since February. How would you describe where your game's at right now? Uh, probably at an all-time high, you know, um, just because of my body, my mind, uh, the way I go out and approach the game. And then, um, you know, just the grace of God giving me the ability to do this. So, and I'm blessed, and I, 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 never, take, uh, I never take it for granted. All right, Cowherd, are you as impressed with the chosen one as the chosen one is with himself? <laughs> I really am. 1,342 games in. In the history of the league, only Kareem was still great at that point, and Kareem had Magic and Pat Riley helping him out. LeBron's gone an average coach to slightly above average, and Larry Nance Jr., not even as good as his dad. Okay, just think of the 2003 draft class. Chris Bosh is out of the league, Melo fell off a cliff, and D. Wade's done, mostly done. LeBron is now still mostly, on most nights, easily the best player in the game. Only Kareem in my lifetime can say that. It's remarkable to me. I, I do think he's playing at a remarkable level. However, and, and Chris, I know you were a witness to it, and Ali, you, you witnessed as well, being from Ohio. The original LeBron James in Cleveland was pretty phenomenal. I mean, he took a, a collection of us to the NBA Finals. Uh, and so I, I'm not sure if this is an all-time high. Uh, it's great what he's doing at his age, but I think we've seen a better LeBron James. Yeah, I, I would agree with you there. What he's doing is phenomenal. It's unprecedented. I've said it before. I said it last year when he's in his 14th year. He's the first player in NBA history to be the best player in the world in your 15th season. So this is incredible. But this is not the best LeBron James we've seen. I mean, we can talk offense if you want, but defensively. I mean, he was ranked out of the 326 players in the league who played 500 or more minutes. LeBron is ranked 311 in defensive rating. Now, four years ago, he was a phenomenal defender. He used to be a monster on offense and defense. Now he is on offense. I think he's coasting on defense because he's saving up energy yeah. for offense. But still, he's not as effective defensively. So, no, it's not the best LeBron James. I think what he's able to do in his 15th season, he has accomplished two firsts here in his 15th season. Number one, he stands in a category of his own, 38 and 8, yeah. here in season 15. He's coming off his first month ever averaging a triple-double in his 15th season. But I think where LeBron continues to elevate his game is with his mind and those around him. That is what separates LeBron from anyone else here at this point of his career. Well, there, let me ask you is Tom Brady at his best? Because in the last four years, he's never gotten to the Super Bowl this regularly. Okay, Tom's probably not physically, but it's the same thing. If you lose 12% physically, gain 30% intellectually, you can make the argument. You see this with baseball pitchers. Kurt Schilling once told me, he goes, I could still throw 96 just 12 times a game, but I manipulated umpires when I got into my 30s. I manipulated batters. I didn't at 24 years old. They're six and four in their last 10 games. That, that's the problem, the hole in this argument for me, is, again, I go back to the original LeBron in Cleveland with... Uh, Anderson yeah, Verge. Yeah, uh, all these... Yeah. And they won night after night after night because LeBron James was so magical and could lift everybody up. I just don't know if he's lifting everybody up as high as he Al, used to. Al, you, you, you cover him more than all of us. Mm -hmm. So you didn't see us for two or three years in the league, right? So you've been working there in Ohio for how long covering the Cavs? It's my sixth season. Okay. So tell me 
what do you see that I don't at practice? What, what, what impresses you? I think the attention to detail. Number one, LeBron leads by example, day in and day out. And the attention to detail, whether it's coming from play standpoint, whether it's coming from his work ethic, whether it's coming from showing up to the practice floor on time, which means hours ahead of time to work on his craft. These players that came in at the trade deadline, don't forget the Cavs blew things up. You mentioned four and six and six four, and six and four. It's been 10 games. <laughs> it's been 10 games. What I loved last night was that those guys on the floor who came at the trade deadline got to witness it alongside of him. That's a whole nother story. That's a whole nother ball game. So when you're around this guy every single day, there's an impact that's being made there. But you also have to understand, you got to learn how to play with him. And he's not an easy guy to play with. He's the greatest player on the planet right now. But it doesn't mean that it's easy and it's just going to overnight. I think the reason LeBron made the statement and why he feels he's the better than ever is my, his mental game. Like, Absolutely. When he was in Cleveland those first seven years, I, I, I thought he sold himself short by going to Miami because I thought he was good enough, as you said. He didn't have the supporting cast he has now. And he was winning 66 games, 61 games. I thought they could have beat Boston with the big three. I thought they could have beat the Lakers of Kobe and Pau Gasol. But LeBron wasn't ready mentally. Now he's a much stronger player mentally, and but he doesn't have the physical tools that he used to have. So you're right. What what like I think he moves better without the ball. He doesn't dominate the ball as much. He's a better I think he's outside on the court. shooter than he was seven eight years ago, isn't he? A better he three is, ball I shooter. I mean, percentage wise. He's had better years, but he's shooting it well. He's streaky, you know, but he he is offensively maybe playing better because he's strong with his mind, but the defensive but, game's just not there. But, but also, in his 15th season, he now gets to play the way he wants to play. He's 33 years old in his 15th season, and this guy wants to run. That's where he takes over. That's where he's in a position to dominate, and he's got guys now, pieces around him, that can go with him, that can play to that style. That's impressive. Yeah, yeah, remember this, too. The second best Cav is coming back. It's like Kevin loves an all-star. Rodney Hood is not an all-star, so this could get better. I'm just glad Osmond's on the bench again. <laughs> <laughs> to the Lakers, who got a win over the Magic Daddy, we love you, the first judge. On the same day that a fan <laughs> put up billboards around Los Angeles aimed at luring LeBron away from the Cavs, Lakers have been on a hot streak of late, and now... Laker turn Cav Jordan Clarkson says LeBron moving to LA was definitely a topic of conversation among his former teammates saying quote I wouldn't say like management and coaches or nobody but in the locker room people talk you know when they see what's going on that's probably the only thing people talk in the locker room about Whitlock do you think the Lakers are motivated the players by LeBron's upcoming free agency thousand percent I think People are legitimately like auditioning. Hey, LeBron, choose me. <laughs> <laughs> and they don't want to be run out yeah. if he happens to show up here. And they also want to be promising enough. Like, oh, no, these guys play the right way. They care about winning. They can win. And to make it more enticing. And, again, this is without any instruction from Magic Johnson or Rob Palenka or anybody. Or, hell, maybe it is with instruction. Like, hey, guys, we need to make sure that this dude wants to come and play with y'all and that we have a winning culture here. I certainly think when you look around the league and, and Adam Silver's calling teams, getting on Chicago about tanking and other teams are tanking for draft, the Lakers are running through the finish line, and I think part of the reason is they want to look good for LeBron. And I, everybody wants to impress the new boss or the potential new boss. And to your point, I think none of the Lakers are all-star level players right now. Brandon, Kyle Kuzma, Lonzo. Mm -hmm. So there's no jealousy of LeBron. And they also know Steph, Clay, Durant. So this is not a franchise. There are teams that are like, man, you know, there are some stars in the NBA that don't want to play with LeBron. I think this young group of Lakers realizes we can catch Golden State with an acquisition. And by the way, it's in L.A. We want to be in the playoffs in June. So I don't think there's any animosity, any concern. Like, they look at LeBron as the magic potion, the magic elixir that takes him from 11th seed to 3rd. And I think they are auditioning for him. I agree with you, Whitlock, in that they're saying, look, if he comes, I want to play well so I'm not the one that's jettisoned and, and yeah. sent packing. <laughs> but I cannot wrap my arms around thinking that they're sitting there trying to impress LeBron right now. 
I think these are young players that are trying to become all-stars. Mm -hmm. These are young players that are trying to put themselves in position to get max money. These are young players that were motivated by winning. But to think their motive, and just to be the best players they can, I, I can't think that they're consciously thinking, we got to impress LeBron so he comes here. Because you know as a player, when a top player goes out or is not there, you're thinking, that's more for me. I mean, even though you might want a great player like that, you want, you want to shine on your own, and you know if LeBron comes, you're going to be a role player. I'm not saying they don't want him. I'm just saying I don't think that's their motivation, impress LeBron. I agree with that because, number one, if you're not doing your job and you can't help this guy, why would he want to come play for you? But at the end of the day, here's my take. I'm not going to speculate inside other locker rooms per se. But there's only one guy that knows what he's going to do. Yeah. One guy. He's made that very clear, and that's LeBron. And quite frankly, I don't even think that's his focus. Actually, I know that's not his focus because that's not how he operates. We have seen this time and time again that this is an in-the-moment guy who is going to maximize his opportunity. You're looking at me like I'm crazy. However, <laughs> I truly... Jordan Clarkson just said in the Lakers locker room they're talking about LeBron. So that makes me think, why wouldn't that be true in Cleveland that maybe LeBron ain't participating in it, but the Cavaliers are talking about LeBron and where he's going to end up and that has to impact LeBron a little bit. It's human nature, but at the end of the day, I stand inside that locker room. And one thing I can tell you is that guy has invested day in and day out at an exhausting level as to what he can do as a player in between the lines to get this team where they need to be come postseason. Here's the other thing. He has proven that time and time again. You can't, you can't keep a secret. I mean, if it's Trump's White House, it leaks four days before it's out. <laughs> you can't keep a secret in America, especially now Not with social media. Yep. When LeBron went to Miami, we didn't know two days before because yeah. LeBron didn't know. If he did, it'd get out. Nobody's keeping that secret. When LeBron, the letter, went to Cleveland, that thing didn't get out ten minutes before it got out because LeBron decided late. LeBron has shown us twice. He'll move. But he, can't, he doesn't keep secrets. LeBron's not one of these guys that makes a decision a year and a half in advance. See, I do, I do oh, think he keeps secrets. You think he's made I his mind up. I think he knew. Yeah. A long, I don't know if it was that whole last year in Miami or during the finals, but I think he wanted to come home to Cleveland. But what if he'd have oh, won no a doubt. championship that year? I, I think he wanted to come home to Cleveland. Really? It would have been easy to leave. We, he yeah. had one goal. He we wanted to deliver people. that yep. city a yep. title. It didn't matter who the coach was. He wouldn't have wanted David Blatt. But he said, it didn't matter. It didn't matter who the owner was. I don't get along with him, but this is what I want. I want to go back to Northeast Ohio. And Miami, I, I, obviously, I think he decided at some point that summer. But your point is well taken that this notion that LeBron's business is out in the street a year in advance, everybody knows he wants to go to L.A., that's ridiculous. Nobody knows except him. He may know. But I don't think put anybody his, else knows. I don't even think his best friends know. He put it he respectfully. He put his wife out there. Yeah. Unless you, if my wife, my kids, my friends, my camp, unless it comes from my mouth, speaking of him, he didn't say it. Okay, but you're in that locker room. You, you, do you think LeBron is sticking around next season? Do I think LeBron you is you sticking think he'll around be in Cleveland next, next season? season? Yeah. Uh, I think only time will tell. What I do think... If you had to bet, if we were in Vegas <laughs> and you had to bet Cleveland or elsewhere, what would you bet? He's staying in Cleveland. Really? He's, he's made it clear he would love to finish his career in Cleveland. Listen, most people... But this guy wants to win. What I do think is that he's got about five years left at this Why level. is he talking about being flattered by Philadelphia billboards and things? Because he's in his 50s. Season hey, listen. And people are trying to recruit him. I mean, you wouldn't mind that pattern? And LeBron does like that. Like, even in 2010, when he was much younger, he liked that New York was, you know, chasing him and all. The, like, he'd go to these cities and kind of say something that flirtatious Who with them. Love to make, be yeah, wanted. so he, that's just, LeBron's got some of that. By the way, you can be in a happy marriage and somebody says you look handsome and it makes you feel good. It's okay. <laughs> I mean, you can. You know, did I meant to tell you, you know, I had lunch with Margot Robbie today. You did not. I, at Moe's Cafeteria, Margot Robbie. You did not. I promise you. Did, am I, we'll talk did about that. Did that have anything to do with you look nice or it, something? Yeah, she actually did comment on how well I look. I <laughs> kid you not. I promise you, I saw her Mark leave.
She yeah, had striped well, pants on? Yes. She's working she's on a new amazing. movie from here to ear. No, no, she's done a new wow. movie. It's called I Whitlock. <laughs> yes, I, <laughs> I Whitlock. All right, Ali, you did a great job. Thanks, Mid American Eric. Conference basketball player. University oh, lead off with Ball. Not good out. enough to play at Ball State, but she did play <laughs> it today. Okay, okay, how did Ball State All do right. against the Toledo men? All right, very good, actually. <laughs> Welcome back. We're joined now by three time Pro Bowler D'Angelo Hall, founder of the big league Jason McIntyre. Let's move to the NFL Combine, where it seems every year we get reports about the strange and unusual questions teams ask prospects during the interview process. Well, this year's no different, more controversy, at least according to LSU running back Darius Geis. It was pretty crazy, bro. You know, some some people some people are really trying to get in your head, man, it's, and really to just test your reaction and see what your reaction to be. I go in one room, a team will ask me, you know, do I like men, just to see my reaction. I go in another <laughs> room, they'll try to bring up one of my family members or somebody and tell me, hey, man, I heard I heard your mom, you know, you know, sells herself. How do you feel about that? All right, Whitlock, what's your reaction to the comments? Uh, I want to know context. Uh, he seems to be laughing it off. The host laughed it off. Uh, and so before we go too far with anything, I want to hear some more context. And so I, I, I'm not ready to, you know, I heard someone say, or DeMora Smith said, they should ban the team from the combine for a year. Let, let's find out what actually really happened and what the context was. Uh, because again, in this radio interview, he didn't lay this out in a clear way to where we understood the context. I just want some more information. I, I wouldn't ask about sexuality. I'm not asking about your mama. Um, but could I ask about your alcoholic father? Could I ask about your brother in jail? I almost wonder if they should cancel the interview process. <laughs> because you're not gaining much from it. This is the 13th straight year I've heard this story. Again, you could ask me anything in an interview, and if it was a bad question or inappropriate, I'm not, I would almost laugh at it. At some point, somebody's going to be asked about their sexuality, and they're going to say, yeah, I do like guys. W why? And then the NFL GM or whatever is going to go, oh, my God, what do I? Like, what's the win for the league in the questions? And what can you ask? Because it, it, that clearly could put you in the crosshairs of a discrimination lawsuit. And but what can you ask? Again, that's why I say put a name on it. Tell me the team. Tell me the person then I'm going to react. Is it an interview process, Jason, or in 12 minutes when I have to pay you $9 million, is it actually an interrogation process? Could be. Could, D'Angelo's been yeah, through the yeah, process. No, no, I absolutely think it's more of an interrogation process than an actual interview process. They have a short amount of time. <clears throat> if you've ever been to the Combine, which I'm sure a lot of you haven't been in those <laughs> rooms, but they have a little blow horn. That blow horn blows. <clears throat> rush guys in, rush guys out, people from each... Uh, organization is trying to grab that guy real quick. They get him in the room as fast as they can. Bam, interview starts. Um, so you don't have a lot of time, um, but you try to just get to, to know these guys, just to try to figure out, hey, are they telling the truth? Are they the type of guy? And a lot of the questions they're asking, they already know the answer to. And so when that kid leaves, it's, you know, some of the comments are, hey, man, that kid's definitely lying. Or, Hey, that kid, you know, he's telling the truth. You were in these. What, what, what do they ask you? I mean, the weirdest thing I had, I, I walked into the Cleveland Browns uh, interview room, and, you know, I was a, a, a guy who had kind of been labeled as, you know, a me guy and, you know, selfish, he's cocky. And, I mean, I literally had a manual lie detector test done to me. I had a guy, I can't even remember who the guy was, um, but, I, I mean, I know the other coaches in that organization at the time, um, but I had a guy literally hold my hands out put his fingers right kind of on my pulse, look into my eyes and ask me questions. And I was as truthful as I could because I was kind of scared. I'm 20 <laughs> years old. I've never, yeah. I've never had a lot of tech tests done. So I don't know if this dude is just playing with me, if he's fishing for something. So I just tried to give him, give him the best answers I could that were as truthful as possible. You know, are you a me guy? Uh, sometimes I, you know, I, I like to get interceptions and I like, you know, I like, you know, Did I like you to make plays. They were, were they inappropriate? No, no. But now and then, it's two totally different yes. things. We're dealing with a lot more things in today's society than we were 15 years Social ago when media. I came out. And so I definitely think these comments are inappropriate. I kind of mentioned, hey, maybe they should. I mean, we record everything in the NFL. Walkthroughs because of rules, off-season programs, lifting, running. 
And so maybe it's something where, hey, they put a camera in there so yeah. you can, you know, not to give the information to other teams, but just to, hey, so the protect league yourself. can just monitor it and only protect yourself. Only the Cleveland yourself. Browns, right? I mean, that's of course. Yeah, only but the Cleveland let me, Browns. Uh, D'Angelo, the possibility exists, right, that this was a test for Darius Geis. Let's see how he reacts to a question because, you know, you get to the line of scrimmage in the trenches. There's a lot of trash talking. Yeah. There's a lot of guys getting under your yeah. skin, trying things. So I'm going to try to give them the benefit of the doubt. But you guys know I run a website, and I recently yeah. we hired three new guys to our site. And, you know, I can't ask a question like this, but I don't think it reveals anything about someone's character anyway. However, I can say, man, I looked at your Twitter feed. You really talk about politics a lot. I don't think that's going to play on our website. And I was up front with the guy. He went and quickly deleted all his stuff on the politics. We, we added him to the site. Everything worked out great. I wonder in these rooms, is there is there too much risk when you're asking a question like that? I mean, it, to me, I mean, I don't I know if it's, it's too, too, too much, much risk, risk, but I definitely think I don't feel like you can get anything out of anybody by asking those questions. Okay, I mean, at the end of the day, okay, consider this. He was joking, saying, "Hey, you know," he was kind of laughing about it, like you know. I think they were just trying to rattle my cage and right. just see how I responded. But this gets out into the social media climate, which we know is dangerous mm -hmm. right now. And you've got an NBA league uh, that's trying to battle the NFL. They're way behind. But you know the NBA. They're not asking this question. They, they had an openly gay player in the league. Rajon Rondo says something to an official. They suspend him. Kobe gets a fine. I, 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 only thing, I, I just don't want to go too far. One person, allegedly, who's unnamed so far, uh, may have asked a question. I don't... The league has counseled people on this repeatedly. They've reprimanded people. They put them through a little course and try to explain to them what questions you can and cannot ask. I do think the NFL has taken this seriously, but people do dumb stuff. And people, again, some of these scouts or coaches, they're not the most experienced. But these are gym teachers. These aren't... Uh, broadcasters but, but, or see but you know why they're asking the questions because i got nine minutes if fox wants to hire you they can take you to lunch three times dinner twice and you can make a huge salary nfl player makes the same salary i have nine minutes we know why they're asking the questions it they well, need to poke I don't well, know well, well, not this well, one well but you I'm know saying, what too this isn't the only time they've seen some of the ki these kids they would have seen a lot of them at senior bowls they would have been to this universities um, this isn't the first time they're getting a chance to see these kids and talk to them. Not I, listen, at all. I don't believe this is the case, but I'm just going to throw out a potential hypothetical. Because, again, I used to be an idiot in a football locker room. And if you went all the way back to my college days, particularly back in the 80s, there was a lot of guys that were homophobic yeah. in our locker room. And so, again, this is a hypothetical, and I don't want to throw... But what if they had heard a story that the kid was a hothead and that he was homophobic? And they wanted the question. Interesting. He's framed it as one question, and they may have asked in a different way. And he, they may, do you have a problem with uh, homosexuals or something like that? And then he turns around and tells the story differently. Again, so again, I want a full investigation. No team has been named. No person has been named. The guy told the story half-heartedly on radio and laughed it off and we're now going to put the NFL on trial and an unnamed team on trial, we can still acquire some more information before jumping to conclusions. All right, welcome back. D'Angelo Hall and Jason McIntyre are back. Let's move to Seattle, where reportedly the Seahawks are expected to release Richard Sherman in the next couple of days. But Sherman appears to be acting as if he's already gone. Reportedly, he let teammates and family know he would be leaving, and his mother even tweeted about it before the corner had actually met with the team. All right, Cowherd, do you like how Sherman is handling this? Um, this is how Sherman entered the league, how he played, uh, how he uh, taunted Brady. Richard Sherman doesn't have an agent. Now he makes his own news, and I think he's a little bit of a personality, a little bit of a newsmaker. So should we expect him to now go inauthentic and not go to Twitter? I think Richard's always been a volume guy. He's an authentic guy. This is who he is. I mean, you don't go from Compton to Stanford to this to the best corner for eight years in the league without a chip, without an edge, without a voice. Uh, he is one of the most engaging, polarizing players in the league. What, how else would he leave? My gut reaction this morning was, I didn't like this. Then I thought about it. I go, actually, I do kind of like this. <laughs> Look, he's acting as his own agent. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
he doesn't, he wants to control where he plays next. If he's leaving Seattle, he wants to control it. So how do you control it? Take away all the trade value. Hey, they're cutting me. I'm out of here. Now no team wants to give up anything for Richard Sherman. He's devalued his trade value. He wants to be cut so he can choose where he plays ah. next rather than where Seattle chooses. That's interesting. I actually kind of like it. You know, I don't <laughs> think anybody was going to trade for him at this point just because I, he can't pass a physical, and so he wouldn't be able to even be traded at this point mm. because of the Achilles injury. Um, but I don't mind it at all. I don't mind it at all. Like you said, he's a guy, ever since he came into the league, very polarizing, loves social media. He's a star on social media, and so and he's very smart. And so... I don't mind him going out and saying, hey, this is what's going to happen. And I don't even know if, you know, I think they might have asked him to take a pay cut. He might have been offended because I know how these meetings go. I've been in them. And so, you know, you don't go in and have a guy like Richard Sherman and just say, hey, uh, we're going to cut you. You try to keep the guy there. Normally, you try to keep the guy there. And I'm thinking they probably came in there and said, hey, Richard, we want to take your salary down. I don't think he thought he deserved that, especially with question marks around Cam and some of the other guys who are, you know, you don't know if they're going to be there or not. Um, he probably felt like my value as a leader, as a player on his team, is here. And so I think he's kind of initiating the, uh, well, forcing their hand for them to cut him. Because I guarantee they, as an organization, said, we want Richard Sherman here, but we can't have Richard Sherman here for $11 million. $5 million, we love you to death. And I think he came back and said, hey, guys, I don't think I'm going to be here. I, you know, his teammates didn't tweet out the full story. I don't know. I haven't talked to him. Um, but I'm pretty sure those guys came in there and said, hey, Richard, we want you to take less money. We want you here. And I think his pride just said, hey, I'm a better player than that, which I think he is. I don't know if he's worth $11 million, but he's definitely, um, you know, I, a star I like corner. the pay cut theory, but I... I just wonder, he had to know this was coming, right? They tried to trade him last year mm -hmm. when the big story came out about he was still angry with Russell Wilson and the Super Bowl interception. And, and you could just feel the cracks in Seattle all year. Remember the game Earl Thomas, they played the Cowboys. Afterwards, he's caught on a mic talking to Jason Garrett. Hey, come get me in the offseason. We off all season. do that. Though, yeah, but, of yeah. course, yeah. We're just but joking. But you could ahead. see uh, Michael, Michael Bennett this week. Oh, we're going to trade him, and then he's shipped out of town. You could see, like, the foundation of that dynasty, if you want to call it that. They went to two Super Bowls. Uh, Should have won another one. But I'm, I, can't, I don't think he's that surprised by this. Um, I, frankly, we've seen Darrell Rivas turn 30, and he kind of went downhill with the injuries. We saw Namdi Asamoa in Philly sign that huge contract, turn 30, kind of went downhill. You're one of the few quarterbacks, D'Angelo, who have stayed well past 30 and done well. I just wonder, is this the end for Sherman? Coming off an Achilles... I'm going to push back against your theory that no one would trade for him because if I had a six-round pick or maybe even a fifth, I would rather take a flyer on him coming off an Achilles than some kid in college who's never played in the NFL. Well, well you know what the difference is? That kid who's never played coming out of college is going to cost you about $300,000. He's going to cost you $11 million. No, 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 no. And that's you, the difference. Yeah, in a trade. You know, right. if you trade right. for him, yeah, got, you have to got, take the contract. Because yeah, right. he's not, they're not going to trade for him and then Great expect point. him yep. to renegotiate that contract back down. Let's move to Saquon Barkley, who did himself a world of good at the Combine. Boy, was he good. An electric performance that's put him in the discussion to be the first overall pick by the Browns. But as much as Cleveland loved Barkley last week, they can't be happy about, uh-oh, what he's been up to since then with former Brown train wreck Johnny Manziel <laughs> posting a picture of himself working out with Barkley saying, quote, undisputed number one pick, go get it, my guy. Whitlock, should this hurt Barkley's draft stock? No, I, I don't think it's going to have any impact on his draft stock, but it does raise an eyebrow for me. It does. Oh, oh what's he on? I mean, <laughs> and, and it's like, is it about the good time he's about to have, all this money he's about to fall into? And so it, it raises an eyebrow. And it's just like he went with Rock Nation as his agency. That raises an eyebrow. The kid's talent is unbelievable. What he did at Penn State, the way he performed at the Combine, all of that is, is remarkable and off the chain. But I just wouldn't want my brand anywhere near Johnny Manziel before I get drafted, before I sign a contract. After I sign my contract, let's go kick it, Johnny. Before, I'm doing everything to sell myself as a model citizen. It doesn't bother me because Barkley's a star running back. 
But when Vince Young said his best friend as a rookie was Pac-Man, <laughs> I remember it. Yeah. And at that time, now Pac-Man's now grown up. Yeah. I mean, he's now, yeah. but he was squirrely back then. Yeah. Uh -huh. And I remember thinking, that's not good. Yeah, that's yeah. Like, that's not going to end well. Yeah. He's a running back. I, I really, I see the world differently. I don't care about the Wonderlick. But if you're a quarterback and you got a seven on it, I would think, that ain't good. Yeah. I don't care if you're, I don't care everywhere else. So I look at Barkley and I'm like, he needed somebody to throw to him. Who's a former NFL quarterback that's always available? Johnny Manziel. So all the former quarterbacks out I there. I know, you but it Johnny doesn't football? bother me. How about this? What if he D'Angelo, here's how I look at this, right. okay? What happened with Johnny football in Cleveland? Unmitigated disaster. All the talk over the weekend, Cleveland Browns want Saquon Barkley. Mm. Saquon Barkley, ugh, Cleveland. <laughs> I don't want to go there. How could I tick them off? <laughs> Let me go hang out with Johnny Football. That's not true. Okay. Let, let me go hang out that, with Johnny I mean, Football. And you know who else was there? Joe Hayden, that another definitely... guy who was a disaster in Cleveland. They shipped him out. He was on Pittsburgh this season. But D'Angelo, I just look at this as Saquon Barkley sending a message. He, wow. tried, to, he tried to get no, Khloe Kardashian. Not that <laughs> <message>. <laughs> 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 the only other guy that's hung out with Johnny Football is who recently? Odell Beckham, who is already a colossal headache come for the New York on, Giants. I want to be the highest paid on. player in the league. You don't think come, that, ahead, that is an interesting on. theory, though. That, 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 that is an interesting theory. But come on, man. These guys are at a place, at a facility training. Johnny happens to be there. Hey, I don't think they called each other and said, hey, let's go work out together. I just think they just happen to be at the same training facility. Hey, let's snap a pic. Just a mere coincidence. Yeah. They didn't well, go to the yeah, same just college. A, no, but you make the same area. I mean, come on now. You make a good point. Every president. Every president ever at a fundraiser has had a picture taken with a criminal. It doesn't matter who it is. Well, if, you're there, you take, if you take 10,000 pictures smile. over the course of a presidency, there was somebody at a fundraiser that's shady. And I guarantee Saquon didn't say, hey, let's take this picture. He I'm put sure the picture. It was probably. He, I mean, he, he put, put the yeah, picture. Yeah, because if a guy asks to take a picture with you, it's just it's, it's just courtesy. Like if a guy follows you, you follow him back. I followed you. You didn't follow me back. Well, I didn't. I haven't been on my phone yet, but I'll I'll, I'll follow you back. It's, it's just, just common I'm courtesy. Just he could go if a guy posts a picture for you, if a guy posts a picture of you and 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 gives you all that respect, you got to retweet the post. You got to repost it. I mean, it's just so it's common courtesy. Thing. And Saquon, come I like your theory. He's a heck of he a player. Pissed the Browns off. I'm sure Johnny Manziel is <laughs> trying to hang with him, not the other way around. Welcome back, Chris Broussard, J-Mac here. Let's move to Milwaukee. The Rockets got yet another win last night, easily beating the Bucks, extending their winning streak to 17. Houston continues to hang on to the best NBA record, one game up on Golden State. Last night, James Harden was asked if he was impressed with their win streak. Because we're just out there hooping, man. We don't, we're not worried about wins and losses right now. We're worried about playing the right way on both ends of the floor. And that's going to carry over into the postseason. More times than not, 90% of the time, if we play the right way on both ends of the floor, great things will happen. So, uh, result, he wins. Whitlock playoffs are a month away still. Are the Rockets peaking too early? No. Th this reminds me of the early years with Golden State and Steve Kerr's first, second year when it was just about let's perfect our style of play. And if we perfect our style of play, uh, the results will happen. And so... I know Mike D'Antoni hasn't had a lot of postseason success. I know that's a knock on Chris Paul. But I just see a very determined team. I've always really liked Chris Paul. I think he wants to be the Isaiah Thomas of this generation. And he knows he's got to have postseason success to, to do that. And so I don't think they're just peaking too early. I, I just think they're just trying to perfect their style of play and they, if they get it perfect, they think it'll be good enough to be Golden State. You know what it reminds me of? Those two 14-game winning streaks by Mike D'Antoni's sons. <laughs> That's what it reminds me of. It's too easy. It's too early. I don't know. I watch this team, and I'm like, they're, this is great basketball. They're, they're, that Oklahoma City game the other night, end of the first quarter, you're like, this game's over, on the road. Nobody sustains this level of basketball for another two months. It's too hot. Let me tell you about that Suns team because you're referencing they went out in the second round. Yeah, and they, okay. and they had they, they, they went great. out. They were a great team. They went out in six games to the eventual champion, San Antonio Spurs. And a big reason they lost that series was when Amari Stoudemire, who was at the peak of his powers, was suspended for getting off the bench in a brawl for game five. It was 2-2 then. So my point is just that 
that team may have been able to win a championship because whoever was winning the West was going to win it all. But, look, we won't believe whatever team comes out of nowhere, and this is out of nowhere because we didn't expect Chris Paul and James Harden to mesh like they did. When Golden State in 2015, they came out of nowhere. They shocked us by how good they were. We won't believe it until we see it. So we'll pick something. Mike D'Antoni's playoff success or lack thereof. Chris Paul, James Harden, in the clutch, they struggle. They win too much. You know, whatever it is, <laughs> we're going to pick something. Okay. We won't believe it until we see him beat Golden okay. State. Last three years, what's the Golden State team that lost the finals? The one that got tired at the end that set the regular season record. These but guys you know ahead. they should have won that. If Draymond, Draymond doesn't get suspended, they yeah. win that Maybe series. he was fatigued mentally oh. and started <laughs> kicking people. <laughs> Listen, I, I, I don't think the Rockets are peaking too early. Yeah. The thing I keep coming back to with this team, and I thought, I, I'm with Broussard, I thought they would be a disaster. You know, uh, Paul and Harden fighting for the ball. None of that's happened. What they've become is the number one isolation team in the league. They, uh, I mean, that's all they do. If you watch the highlights, it's James Harden going against somebody on the perimeter, and he can't be guarded by anybody. However, in the playoffs, the court shrinks. We talked about this, Chris. The, everybody plays tighter defense. This regular season defense is a joke. They're not really trying that hard. In the playoffs, is this isolation going to work? Because we saw what happened against San Antonio. James Harden, all alone last year. Couldn't I say Kind of melted too? down. When's the last time they faced adversity? You go on these 22-game winning streaks, the playoffs are all about adversity. Look, Chris Paul missed 18 games, you know, so there's some adversity there. I mean, James Harden, they thought he'd be out four weeks. He was Didn't the reason miss some games? Yeah, Reese's missed some but games. Injuries are Here. different than, than, like, as a team getting their butts kicked by the Warriors and say, game two, and whoa, we're shell-shocked. No, With all no, your no, starters, guys. Here's what I'll say, because you made an interesting point about regular season versus postseason defense. One thing that's impressive this 17-game win streak. Now, let me go back to the first one, 14 games. They were playing at a pace that was top five in the league. This 17-game win streak, they're playing at a pace that's bottom 10 in the league. So they're playing at a much slower pace than they have most of the season. That is going to get them prepared for playoff basketball because we know in the playoffs it's a much slower game. So, look, I'm, I'm not predicting they'll beat the Warriors, but I, they are clearly the second-best team in the league. They are. And I give them a 30% chance to beat Golden You State. don't like – I'm, I, I, I've always liked Chris Paul's attitude. Oh, I love Chris Paul. He, he, you know, he's hard on people, and people don't like him, but it comes from a good place. The guy wants to win. And then I, I think Chris Paul's attitude has made James Harden. One of the things, and again, I don't know if he's backing it up on the court. Chris, help me out here. But that's the first time I've ever heard James Harden even talk about the other end of the court. And he's talking <laughs> about playing on both ends of the court the right way, yeah. and he knows he's a part of that. And so I, I think Chris Paul has helped James Harden mature. And I just think you back some really talented players into a corner for a long – eventually they're going to respond. And I just feel like Chris Paul's backed into a corner, James Harden, Dan Tony's backed into a – Listen, you guys, the question is, am I worried they're peaking early? The question is, do you think they'll get bounced in the first round? I love Houston, but do I think – it's hard to play at this level yes. for long. I watched LeBron in Miami and D. Wade. They had some. Remember they had that long winning streak. Seven, but and they, then they won it that year. Yeah, and then they but they peeled off of that. They started resting for about a two week period. Yeah. Then the playoffs started. Heck, like the when Cavs. do they sit starters and kind of get ready for the playoffs? Coward, the Cavs won 15 straight in like November, December this year. Yeah. And within a month, they were like shell-shocked and they had to trade everybody. Whitlock, I want to go back to this, okay? You talked about Chris Paul and James Harden. I, again, off Cowherd's adversity. Who is the leader in that locker room? Who will they galvanize around in a tight playoff series? Hey, it's great during the 17-game win streak. Go, they two, got down two, two guys. Two, but who? Who is the alpha? We know it's LeBron in Cleveland. In Golden State, we know it's Steph Curry. He's the leader. Who is the guy in the Again, th there have been teams with two guys. And, and it, I mean, it was always it, magic with the Lakers. Bird no, no, with the no, Celtics. No, no, Michael no, no, Jordan. No, no, no. I mean, you had Kareem there. And trust me, at crunch time, we're going to throw the ball into Kareem, yeah, and he's right. going to drop the sky hook. Kobe and Shaq, at, you know, again, it was Shaq maybe a little bit more than Kobe. But two guys can – that's not a bad problem to have. Two guys that want the ball in their hand. Look, James Harden can get to the line like a machine. That's a great thing to have at the end of a game. Chris Paul, I just think, will make 
great decisions and make sure that they're prepared and doing the right thing. He's also thing. a better defensive guard. Yeah. yeah. I it's, think they're both feeding off each other, too. Chris looks, I mean, happier than ever and really relieved to kind of be off the ball and not have to handle it all the time. And Harden looks relieved to have another guy there where he doesn't have to do everything and you got somebody else who can do it when he does it. So, look, I like him a lot. I mean, it's been magical so far. Go ahead, pick up the win the title. So. No, I, I said 30%. 30. Did they meet Golden State? Oh, you're 30%. 30%. <laughs> All right, welcome back. Time for last call. Let's move to Jerry Jones, who reportedly agreed to reimburse the NFL more than $2 million worth of legal fees related to the Ezekiel Elliott suspension and his attempt to stop Roger Goodell's contract extension. Cowherd. Happy to see Jerry Jones fold here. Yeah, I just think, listen, there's a lot of noise last year. Let's get out of the noise business. Let's get out of the litigation business. Let's get back to football. I just, these side ancillary controversies are doing the league no good. Fans want football. You don't want the number one owner of the number one franchise battling the league. Yeah, I think Jerry did a very mature thing here. He won so many. Take this small loss. Keep the peace. Play the long game. He fought a little war, reimbursed. It, it, this, I'm bothered the whole thing was leaked, but maybe that to satisfy some of the if other If $2 involved. million dollars is a small loss, you've already won in life. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and one big. All right, to Detroit, where the Raptors became the first team to clinch a playoff spot with a win over the Pistons, who didn't get much help from new star Blake Griffin. Woo! Blake actually got out of the way, according to Cowherd, as DeMar <laughs> Rosen raced down the court and posterized Anthony Tolliver. Cowherd, you blame Blake for allowing this. Blake's career's over. He'll play for five more years. Funeral services in in He went out Detroit. and guarded the three. Oh, he was guarding the three. He was guarding the three. Now, why? It didn't make common sense. That's DeMar DeRozan coming at you. By the way, why do you move toward a pork chop and a steak? Because you want it. Why did he move away from the dunk? He didn't want it. You no, move. You see that three-point shooter in the corner? Oh, come on. Again, he's tr he tried to fake like and to make DeMar DeRozan make the pass. One point game, five seconds left. Ran to the corner. It wasn't fear that did that. It was a bad decision. He had a restaurant reservation is the only legitimate excuse. <laughs> That was terrible. He had. By the way, Chris Paul won again, Blake. <laughs>